Okay, so today we're doing determination Then it's probably in the room somewhere, because okay. that's what I would leave them there. Of an equilibrium lab, equilibrium constant. Sorry. So, the first part. There's two parts. Part one is you are determining. Um, Epsilon. Okay, so way back in the beginning of the semester, we did a Beer's Law. A is equal to Epsilon B C. Okay, A is absorbance. Epsilon is something called the molar absorptivity. It's a constant for a given situation. B is path length, which for this one is one. And C is concentration in molarity. Okay. And so you're going to measure, so you're going to have five solutions um, that you're going to measure the absorbance. Okay, and we're using the veneer again, and I give you the setup for the veneer. We've used it before, okay? Uh, and the volumes that you add are the ones here in this table, okay? The 1 times 10 to the minus 4th molar iron 3 nitrate, the 1 molar potassium thiocyanide, and the 0.1 molar nitric acid. Now, the 0.1 molar nitric acid is going to be the same, is the same solution for part 1 and part 2. So I only have one burette set up for it. So there's six solutions per se. There's only five different solutions. So I have six burettes set up over there. Not that they're set up yet, but anyway. <laughs> okay, so you're going to be measuring those, okay? And then part two, you're gonna be determining the equilibrium constant. So let me go back real quick. So this is going to be the 1 times 10 to the minus 4th molar iron 3 nitrate, which is also the same thing as Fe3 plus for what we're using. We have the 1 molar KSCN, which we're, for our practical purposes of our reactions is SCN, um, and then 0 0.1 molar nitric acid, which is just to make the solution acidic, basically, okay? And I also forgot to put, that's just how I started, um, put the very beginning equation that we determine the equilibrium constant for is that we have, the reaction that we're doing today is Fe3 plus aqueous plus SCN aqueous goes to form Fe parentheses SCN parentheses 2 plus. This one is also aqueous. So this is the reaction in which we determine the equilibrium constant for here. Okay. Um, and so we're determining this epsilon here. Okay. Which is going to be our X. And so epsilon is going to equal our X for the ice table. Okay. All right. In the part two, like you said, you're trying to determine the equilibrium concentration. We're going to have, this time, the concentrations are different. I have 0 0.025 molar FeNO3, which, like I said, is the same thing as Fe3+. Plus. The NO3 is just the, the canon ion. Um, I have 0 0.0025 molar K. SCN, which is the SCN minus ion, and I still have my 0.1 molar 
nitric acid, which is just to make it acidic. Okay. That's basically its only purpose. Okay. All right. So you have post lab questions. You have four post lab questions. The answers are in text before procedure. Okay, it's definitions, what reaction, uh, what the what is the K, KC equation, and how will you use it? How will you determine the epsilon, uh, the molar absorptivity? Okay. All right. So for calculations. Okay, so for number one, um, we're going to find um, the FESCN concentration, which is going to be equal to the initial FENO3 3 concentration. Okay. And this is using test tubes one through five. Okay, let me go back real quick. Part one is, this is test tubes one through five. Part two is test tubes six through 10, which are the same five test tubes, but it's just part one and part two. Okay, you're just going to empty out the solutions from part one, rinse them out, and use the same test tubes for part two. Okay, all right, so this is referring to test tubes one through five, and but this is just like the um, iodine clock reaction we just did last week, where test tube one has, um, I have the one times 10 to the negative fourth Fe and O3. Three, I have one molar KSCN, and I have 0 0.1 molar HNO3. And so test tube one has one milliliter of this, has five milliliters of this, and four milliliters of this. So is this content? So is this initial concentration? Is it equal to this? No. Why? It's diluted. And so how did we figure out in the last lab what the dilution was, what the diluted concentration was? Right, the dilution equation, which is M1V1 is equal to M2V2. So again, this was given, or it's the one times 10 to the negative fourth. This is the volume added. I'm calculating this one. And this is my total volume in test tube. Okay. And there are going to be five answers. I'm going to have one for one, test tube one, test tube two, test tube three, and test tube four, test tube five. So there's five different answers there because there's five different amounts. Okay. Questions? Okay. All right. For number two, uh, I'm going to use Excel or you can use Google Sheets or something else, some spreadsheet program uh, to plot the FeNO3 concentration versus absorbance. Okay, that's what I forgot to do with startup Excel, but we'll get there. Oh, yes, sorry. Let me get this one started. Because technically we did the FeSen here. So number one, we found FeSen. So 
I can change that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to make up numbers. Okay. And three columns, there's no two. I want them to be big. Okay, so I'm going to have the blank F E or F E S C N two plus that. And Excel's a little harder, but you can superscript it. And then I'm going to have the absorbance. Okay, so I'm going to make up numbers. Um, if I want to use scientific notation in Excel, I basically do it the same way I do it on iClicker. One capital E minus five, two E minus five, three E minus five, four E minus five, and five E minus five. And I'm like I said, I'm just gonna be making up numbers 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.058, 0 0.084, and 0. 9, 4, 5. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put that into Excel, and I want to, when you notice when I'm grabbing this, what am I not grabbing? What's not grayed out? The titles, okay? I only want the numbers in there. I don't want any text whatsoever, so don't put the units in there, just numbers, okay? So if it's not right aligned, you see how this is on the left-hand side of the cell? These two are on the left-hand side, all these on the right-hand side of the cell. If it's not on the right-hand side, right hand side of the cell, it's not considered a number, and Excel will treat it differently, okay? Then I'm going to go to insert a graph, Just and you did all of this, like I said, in the Big Red Lab. Oh, that's where I made a mistake. I should have been point. I dropped a zero. There we go. And it automatically fixes it. Okay, and so I'm going to say Equilibrium Lab, maybe. Some title doesn't have to be that. Uh, you want to label your axis titles. Uh, horizontal is con is concentration and molarity. That's where you put that. Um, the vertical axis is absorbance, and there's no units for it. Okay, and of course the most important thing is the trend line. Just like the last time, I'm gonna come down to the right. I want to go to more options. Okay, so down to trend line to this little arrow here, and then when I click the arrow, I get more options. I want to scroll down. I want to say I want to set the intercept at zero, and I want to display the equation on chart. Okay, if you don't set it to zero, it's going to give you a more complex equation than this, and you really don't want that. Okay, so I got y is equal to 172, 1972.7. Okay, and you need to print that out and put it into your notebook. So this is number two, okay? So number two is just this graph, okay? So um, set intercept to zero on trend line, label axis, Label graph. Check x axis if one, two, three, it's wrong. Okay? So go back, and if you go back here, you'll see that each one of these says e to the minus fifth. Okay? If it doesn't say that, then you've put it in wrong. You've put a number in there somewhere. I mean, sorry. A, some kind of text instead of just a number, okay? So, um, oops, numbers only. No text 
like units. Um, yes. So these right here, which I should have ink, this right here was the answer to number one. Yes. Calculations. And this is number this is really number two here. Oh, you measured it. Measure this is test tubes one through five. So T T is my short way of saying test tube. Okay. All right, so I'm done with one through five. Once I, so post lab one and two calculations is test tubes one through five. All the rest of it is six through 10, okay? So calculations, number one and number two use test tubes one through five, okay? All right, um, this one, I want the trend line, label, uh, equation on chart. Okay, all right, number three. So number three through number six calculations. Ah, if I can only write calculations is test tubes six through 10, okay? Okay, so this time number three, I wanna find the FENO3 three concentration and the KSCN concentration initially, okay? Again, using M1V1 is equal to M2V2. So there's gonna be 10 answers there, five for each, okay? You can make a table with, just show me one and make a table with the rest of them, that's fine, okay? Okay, for number four, um, I'm gonna find the change X from the ice table. Okay. And I'm sorry, that's not right. Okay. Read the lab here. Okay. I'm going to determine the equilibrium concentration I cannot write today. I'm trying to rush. of the FESCN two plus, okay? So this is gonna be my ICE equation. So I have I, C, well, I, C, and E. This is gonna be number three. I'll do, I'm gonna do this in just a second. Okay, the way that I find this is I, I'm gonna use absorbance is equal to epsilon BC, where B is equal to one. The epsilon is the slope from number two. Absorbance is measured in test tubes six through 10. All right, so this is still number four continued. Continued. Okay, so I'm gonna say, so if I have test tube six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I have the absorbance of 0 0.17, 0 0.33, 0 0.57, 0 0.7, 
five, and I'm making up these numbers completely, then it's going to be, so the concentration of FESCN at equilibrium is going to be the absorbance for test tube six divided by E. And so if I go back to this Excel file, my Y was 1972.7. X. So epsilon is equal to 1972.7 for my data, not yours. Okay? So I would have, so the FESCN 2 plus equilibrium for number 6 would be 0 0.17 divided by 1972.7. I do the same thing for test tube 7, 8, 9, and 10. So I'm going to have five answers. Okay. Each answer is X from the ice table. Okay. Because we've done equilibrium problems now, so you know what that means. <laughs> okay. Everybody got that? Huh? Can you find the E? Uh, e is simply, when you do your Excel graph, it is simply the slope. This is E. Or epsilon. No, not that. Oh. Oh, this one? That just e is equilibrium. That's what you're finding for number four, yes. Okay. So, I've told you that we're using the ice table. So, we have the equation Fe3 plus plus SCN minus is in equilibrium to form Fe SCN 2 plus, right? And I've talked about the ice table. Okay, so your answers to number three, and you had 10 answers there, are the initial concentrations of the iron and the initial concentrations of the SCN. What you found for number four was the equilibrium value for SCN. And you got five test tubes, so even though I'm making one table, that's five answers there. What do I assume the initial concentration of my iron FESCN is? Zero. Zero. So this is X, so that's when I said number four is equal to X. So number five is find equilibrium concentrations of Fe or FeNO3 3 and SCN minus, which is the same thing as KSCN. So this is going to be number five. So I'm going to have 10 answers again. Two per test tube. So what do you think number six is going to be? What was the whole purpose of this lab? The equilibrium constant. Ah, okay. <laughs> Didn't make enough slides. Okay, so number six, determine KC for Fe3 plus plus SCN goes to Fe SCN2 plus. Okay, so KC is going to equal going back. What goes in? What goes in the numerator? Yeah, which is number no number four. 
and what goes into the denominator. Number five, twice, yeah. For iron and number five for SCN. Not really, because remember I said, oops, I say you have 10 answers. You really have to do it. It's going to be basically, the calculation is going to be number three minus number four for iron and number three minus number four for the SCN. So that's why you get two per test tube or 10 answers over all over, overall. Okay. Again, you can just make a, you can make a table with your answers. Okay. And so this is going to have five answers that I'm going to average to one. Okay. Huh? No, I want six in all, yeah. So five answers that you then average. Okay. Questions? Okay, I'm stopping the video.